Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Albert Wrights was mowing his lawn one morning when he suddenly felt a strong vacuum-like wind pulling at his back. He turned around and found himself standing just a few feet away from a massive pit where just seconds ago his neighbor's front lawn had stood. But more on the Hideaway Hills sinkhole later. For first, we're going to dive into a technical topic, the soil resistivity test. Why should you know about soil resistivity? Well, this test is often performed when you need to analyze the properties and moisture content of your soil or find underground resources. So if you are planning on farming your land or extracting water or minerals, you may need this test. And in today's video, we have everything you need to know. Number one, what is soil resistivity? Soil resistivity is defined as the measure of how much the soil resists or conducts electrical current. Number two, why test soil resistivity? Well, the soil's resistance to electrical current can help you determine a number of things, such as the location of underground minerals, bedrock, and voids. In addition, soil resistivity affects the degree of corrosion in buried pipes and has a direct impact on the materials and treatments you must use when installing underground structures or pipes. Soil resistivity also affects the design of grounding systems, such as when installing an electrical substation or lightning protection. And finally, soil resistivity is a good proxy for moisture content, which can have a number of applications, especially in an agricultural context. Number three, what is done during the testing of soil resistivity? There are a couple different methods that are used, but at a high level, it involves connecting a ground tester to stakes that are embedded in the ground. In one version of the test, you use four stakes. The tester will run a current through some subset of the stakes. In the four stake method, it'll be the two outer stakes. And the current will run through the ground to the two inner stakes, which measure the drop in voltage. Number four, why do you have to bother testing? If you already know your soil type on your land, don't you automatically know its resistivity? Well, the answer is no. Soil classification can provide only a rough estimate of soil resistivity as other factors affect it as well, such as moisture content, temperature, organic matter, and the depth of the soil. Number five, what is the effect of salt content on soil resistivity? Well, it's a big one because you aren't able to achieve low resistivity with soil alone. Soil must also contain mineral salts as a way to form an electrolyte to conduct electricity. Therefore, mineral salts have some of the most significant impact on reducing resistivity, which means both that soil resistivity is a good way to check for saltwater inundation, but also that if you're looking to treat a soil to improve its electrical characteristics, mineral salts are the first choice for treatment. Number six, how does temperature affect soil resistivity? The temperature coefficient for resistivity is negative. This means that the lower the temperature, the higher the resistivity. This is particularly important if you are in a cold climate because lower temperatures can affect your grounding systems. And number seven, how does moisture affect soil resistivity? Moisture is one of the most important factors in soil resistivity. This is because moisture increases electrical conductivity and reduces soil resistivity. For this reason, soil resistivity testing is a great proxy for moisture content in a soil. Which brings us back to the Hideaway Hills sinkhole. On April 29, 2020, a group of spelunkers showed up at Albert Reitz's home in the Hideaway Hills neighborhood of Black Hawk, South Dakota. It had been two days since a massive sinkhole had nearly swallowed up Albert. Fifteen homes had been evacuated, but the extent of the danger was yet unknown. Which was why the Paja Sapa Grotto, a subchapter of the National Speleological Society, immediately volunteered their expertise to help explore and map the hole. So on this April afternoon, Adam Weaver, Nick Anderson, and David Springetti tied a rope around the sturdiest fence and rappelled their way into the sinkhole. 
When they got to the bottom, they found themselves in a 60-foot wide room littered with debris and rotting pillars. It was not a cave that had collapsed, but a highly unstable gypsum mine. Over the course of the evening, the group mapped as much of the mine as they could safely explore, covering about 650 feet. But there were rocks in the way that prevented the explorers from discovering the full extent of the mine's length, which is where, of course, soil resistivity testing enters the picture. In May of 2021, Dr. Mohamed Sagdi, a professor of geological engineering at Montana Tech, began testing the ground beneath the subdivision to finish mapping the extent of the mine. Soil resistivity tests catch underground voids because areas of high resistivity indicate airfield voids, and these tests showed that the mine extends for far greater length than what the cavers could explore. So where does this leave Albert Reitz and the other Hideaway Hills homeowners? Well, sadly, they are currently in limbo, paying mortgages on worthless homes while their lawsuit against South Dakota, the mine's owner, works its way through the courts. So if your geotechnical or soil engineer ever tests your land for soil resistivity, perhaps tell them to keep an eye out for underground surprises. But do you have any stories about soil resistivity or soil testing? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.